Yeah. Well, Trevor, um, 30 years ago, does it feel like 30 years since you were banging in the goals on the way to that fourth division title? Not really. Uh, time flies, you know. Uh, as you get older. I took a washing machine back a couple of weeks ago and uh, said it had eight, said it had 18 months and they checked it, it had at least seven years, so. <laughs> so uh, I just want to put one thing right as well, because Rambo is not speaking tonight. <laughs> Me and Rambo never went out on the Wednesdays. We were, we were Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Sundays. <laughs> You've flown in for this special occasion from Scandinavia. Tell us about that. What, what are you doing now? Is it Sweden or Norway or, or where is it? Oh, yeah. yeah, the cobblers flew me in with a private plane. <laughs> <laughs> so that's money, no object. No, no money, no object. So, uh, do you want to know what I'm doing? I do. Yeah. Oh, it's. Um, I actually, uh, I work a bit TV in Norway because uh, the Premier League's massive over there and. Uh, so I'm a bit of a TV pundit there, but my main job is really my landlord look after drug addicts, believe it or not. So, uh, I, I don't know why it's funny, but we want to laugh. It's... We thought there might be a punchline to that, but you're being serious. Yeah, and, and Somalians and Africans, and, so, uh, I don't know, just laughing at everything, so. No, but I, I, bought, I was lucky, I, you know, you finish football and, uh, uh, You've got no CV, you know, thick as fuck. And, uh, <laughs> apologies for the language, folks. It's an emotional night. It's all right. You're not, you're not Seth Fabregas, you know. You can't go around swearing on. That's all right. I'm enjoying. Um, yeah, so I bought a few houses and ended up as a landlord, really, glor glorified uh, cleaner. So, yeah. So you still watch the English football? You managed to watch the, the Premier League games from over there? Well, if you've listened to my first yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to supplement that question by saying, "Let me go this one." It will be. <laughs> you let me think about this before I ask it. I ask it. No, you played in the Premier League. I was going to go on to talk about you playing at the highest level after leaving Northampton. I am, yeah. I'm trying to be Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Sycophantic here. But. One other thing I want to say that we had a great side. <laughs> Hilly left us, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he split us up, Judas. <laughs> and from there he went downhill. I love you, mate. I love you, mate. You killed Northampton Town. <laughs> My question was, you watch the Premier League now from uh, your position in Scandinavia. How has it changed from your days when you were playing at the highest level? Is it very different? Has it got quicker? Is it more skillful or what? First of all, why did you go back to Scandinavia? You forgot it was Norway, right? <laughs> Uh, I mean, they're so athletic nowadays, it's incredible. So, um, obviously, the standards higher, a lot more foreign people come in. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of good things to it. A lot of there's a lot of talk about you know changing shirts at half time and high fiving before the game. Where you know Rambo wouldn't have allowed that. <laughs> you know, I played against Vinnie Jones, and he was trying to kill you before you even got on the pitch. So, so, so it's changed for. A lot of good reasons, a lot of bad reasons, but uh, yeah, I finished. <laughs> Let's take you back to 1837, Glorious Coppers team. Uh, you're among the goals. Is there one? I remember seeing you score at Cambridge United on a Friday night. Wonderful goal, turn inside the penalty area, nice finish. Is there one goal, one match that really sticks in your mind as being special above any other? No. <laughs> This is what's called a difficult interview, folks. I'll be honest, uh, you know, I'm not going to say I scored so many that, uh, I mean, basically that team was set up, we worked, we all had a, a role to do, we all worked our socks off, and then uh, just allowed him to run down the middle and score goals. That's what we did, right? That's what it's about. And, uh, like I say, he got a big move and moved away, and then everything fell to pieces. Pieces. <laughs> had to leave as well, I suppose, didn't we, Jack? 
Uh, if, I'm, I'm being hypothetical here, but had you all stayed together, you know, you and Benji and Richard, how how successful could the Cobbers have been? Could they have really risen at the leagues? Uh, yeah, I, I said that earlier. I mean, um, I don't know how Benji got in there, but I love you, Benji. Benji. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. See ya. I think if we stayed together, yeah, I, I felt we would gone up one more time. Uh, let's have to go back to Richard, I think. But that's all my potential, you know. So, um, I think, uh, for me personally, 22 years old, and, you know, I've, I've got a chance now to say thanks to Graham Carl because uh, I've been around a lot, you know, trying to get in the, in the league football, and nobody took a chance on me, and this guy believed in me. And, Took me to Nuneaton and then brought me here. Um, it was quite funny actually because he paid 30,000 to Nuneaton for me and Richard. And I was 5,000, he was 25. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason was at the time because I played for Corby before and they got a third of the money. So they worked out. The only reason he came to Northampton was to save money on my transfer. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm just my luck. A big move to Watford, do you know what I mean? And you know what, he never even bought me a drink, but... <laughs> 30 years on, he could do that. Trouble Warney's been a joy, thank you very much. <laughs>